Good evening and welcome to tonight's program. I'm Emma, one of the librarians here at Rockland Public Library, and we're thrilled to be hosting tonight's talk. Uh, I want to start the night off with a couple quick programming notes on upcoming virtual events this month at the library. Uh, next week on March 25th, Lisa Millette will be offering a presentation on seed saving and how the science of seed genetics is linked to your home garden. And the following week on April 1st, Kevin Johnson, photo archivist at the Penobscot Marine Museum, will be uh, giving a virtual tour of photos in the museum's collection with connections to Rockland. Um, and I'm excited to introduce tonight's speaker. Meg Rasmussen is executive director at the George's River Land Trust. The trust's mission is to conserve the ecosystems and traditional heritage of the George's River watershed region through permanent land protection, stewardship, education, and outdoor experiences. And I'll turn it over to Meg, go right ahead. Thank you, Em. I am really happy to be here and I am so glad to be with all the Rockland Public Library outdoor lovers. So I'm going to just go ahead and share my screen. And I have a PowerPoint that I'm gonna go ahead and start. So I'm gonna talk about the St. George River Canoe Trail tonight. Uh, yes, I am Meg Rasmussen. I'm the executive director here. Uh, that's Alvin. That's me in the front of the canoe and Alvin Chase, our great uh, board chair in the back. And, you know, as you can see, uh, you know, I just have a horrible job. I just uh, I'm outside on the river with fun people all the time, you know. Uh, no, I can't say that. I can say that I have actually the best job that there is. I love my job. And I love getting out on the river and I'm happy to share it with you. So what we're gonna talk about tonight, we're gonna to talk about great experiences along, along the river. I'm gonna highlight ways that you can get on and paddle it. Uh, talk about our trail map that you can get as a guide. We're gonna talk about some of the wildlife that's all around, really beautiful. And then we're gonna talk about how you can save the planet. So the Georges River watershed, uh, what is a watershed? Well, a watershed is an area that drains down uh, water that hits it down into a water body based at its basic thing. So here's a map of the St. George watershed in green. And this blue line is the river. Uh, so really, we go from the headwaters up here in Liberty all the way down through 15 towns. And it comes out here in St. George, between Cushing and St. George into Muscungus Bay. And 144,000 acres are in this watershed. So literally everything that happens around this river affects this river at some point. So we've got to be really careful to not only protect the river, but the land around it so that the river stays healthy. So it starts, uh, the mighty St. George River starts up here in Lake St. George. It's a spring fed lake and that's where our headwaters are up in Liberty. And the St. George River is really beautiful and it sort of has this um, character where it goes through places where it's narrow and woodsy and opens up into lakes and then gets narrow again and opens up into lakes and you know there's uh, seven lakes all through it, kind of connected by this incredible river. So uh, it's beautiful in that way. You can have a lot of different uh, experiences along it. And of course, it runs through this, you know, gorgeous place that we call home, this beautiful, beautiful landscape that we live in. And, you know, it really has different personalities. Some parts of it are, you know, fast and rushing and woodsy. And then some parts of it are very tranquil and just sort of float along. So the St. George Canoe Trail was something that the Georges River Land Trust put together so that people would be able to find places to get their canoe or their kayak or their paddleboard, you know, out onto the river. And you can download it for free at georgesriver.org. Uh, just go to the Trails and Preserves tab and you'll find it. It's downloadable. Uh, and it will tell you where there are access points. 
uh, and uh, where there's rapids, where there's portages. And then interestingly, there are some old mill sites and uh, some canal structures, old canal structures, because there's a lot of land use along, along here, uh, uh, historic land use that you can see still see the signs of. So we have some of those things noted. Now the access in some places is very informal. Uh, some places that we just show where you could pull your car over and get your canoe in the river. And some places that we're noting are, you know, places where you can park your car, get out and, you know, put your canoe in and other ways. So it's a mix of formal and informal uh, canoe access points. So we're gonna start up in the Northern part of the watershed. Uh, and we call this part the Wilderness Loop. Uh, this is from Ripley Corner Road up in Searsmont to the Appleton Preserve down in Appleton. Now this stretch is like, you know, really getting away from it all. It's so beautiful. It's relatively narrow. Uh, there are some challenging rapids uh, and it's best uh, in higher water conditions because as the season goes on and the, the level of the river drops, uh, it's harder to navigate. So uh, usually when I uh, give this talk, I have handed out maps to everybody so they can follow along and of course, we can't do this uh, now, uh, but what I'm going to do instead is kind of uh, orient us with some satellite pictures to show where the access points are that I'm talking about. So um, this is uh, up in Searsmont. Um, <clears throat> this uh, here uh, is, let's see where it is, uh, Searsmont um, Village. Uh, 173 comes down here. Can you guys? Can you see, uh, Em, can you see my cursor? Yep, sure can. Yep. Okay. So uh, that's 173 along here. Uh, this is 131, right? And so where it's dark green, it's uh, forest canopy, forest cover, a lot of trees. And then where we have openings are where there are fields or that kind of thing where the, the tree line is pushed back. So, and, and this line right here is the river. So this is where you can get onto it at Ripley Corner Road. And that's a, a pull over to the side of the road and like get your canoe out and like kayak out and put it in. Uh, and, but you can really see, right? You're kind of getting away from it all. It really is like back there. So it's a great adventure. Um, and then it, it kind of comes down and goes down here towards Appleton Preserve. So that's where we are talking about. And this is what it looks like, you know, so beautiful. Um, kind of uh, kind of fast in some places, yep. Uh, and here are along the way, this is an old mill site. So it's kind of interesting to be able to see kind of these old uh, ruins along the way. Um, there's also this cool, uh, there's an old canal up there. And so we have this canal path um, where, so this is the, the the trail is right on top of it. And this is an old uh, canal abutment. Now I'm digressing a little bit here, but it just goes to show that as you are, are going past some of these things, you'll be able to, to spy them. Uh, and if you wanna walk on the canal path, you'll be able to spy the river. So I recommend that too. But anyway, back to, uh, back to the water. Um, you know, kind of flows along like this. And then in the spring, it starts to flow along like this. This is the view from Ghent Bridge. And then sometimes it flows along like this, and I don't recommend getting into this. This is uh, you know, really pretty heavy and it's uh, kind of in flood stage. So you wanna be careful about that, but it is a roaring river uh, up in that area in the spring. Uh, and if you're up for it, uh, there's the St. George River race. Um, it's usually in March, except you know, not this year. Um, and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a challenging race, but you know, people come out to do it. You can watch from the Ghent Bridge. Um, and that really, looks like, that really looks like March, doesn't it? <laughs> so yeah, water's cold, but totally fun. You know, this kid in the front, you can tell is kind of having a blast. And I don't know, is his dad looking okay back there? But anyway. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a challenging but fun uh, uh, race if you are, uh, you know, if you're a, a paddling enthusiast. 
Uh, the next area we're going to talk about is the Appleton Library to Cenebec Pond. So again, uh, 131 here, we're in Appleton. Here's the Appleton Library. Uh, and you can park here and you can get down to the river uh, and put your uh, boat right in. <clears throat> so that's a, that's a good spot there. And this is kind of the character uh, below that. This is kind of near the pool preserve um, we have in Union, uh, which is a, I don't want to give away any, uh, you know, angler secrets, but this is a good fly fishing spot. Um, and you can also kind of kayak your way through this too. And this ends up, um, Sennebeck Pond is so uh, beautiful. It's, um, you know, just the scenery too, and from it uh, is gorgeous. So if you're in the mood for, you know, kind of getting through a, a little bit of a quieter place and coming out into some ponds, that's a nice, uh, that's a nice way to go. You know, in the fall, gorgeous. Now we're gonna detour a little bit into fish. Uh, so we have some typical warm water species of fish, perch, chain pickerel, large mouth bass. So if you're a, um, if you're a paddler and a angler, you can do both. Of course, the cold water species are the brook trout, the rainbow smelt, and the landlocked salmon. And the landlocked salmon are the ones, you know, that's, those are in the deeper parts of the lakes, but they're there apparently. And this is the best place to take out at the base of Cenebec uh, Pond. It's at the, um, you know, there, there's that, uh, that fish ladder that there's a pull off and, um, you know, below that it's kind of rapids, you know, maybe not that great for, for people who are just out for kind of a, a nice paddle, but this is a great spot or, you know, to put in and, and go the other way up. Um, next, we're gonna talk about Seven Tree Pond to Payson Park. Um, so this is my favorite part of the river. It's calmer, uh, easy rapids, uh, but lots and lots of wildlife to see. So the best place to get in with that is to go to Air Park in Union. You know, you can park your car. It's a grassy, you know, park with a nice um, boat launch area. So you can just pop it right down and then and then zoom down Seven Tree Pond, which is like this, you know, very tranquil, um, windy days, you know, it's a little bit harder, but it is, uh, you know, it's just gorgeous. And you can make your way down. This is uh, White Oak Pond, so pretty spot. And this is what it looks like a little bit below that, you know, the, the canopy kind of goes in, it's very quiet, you just, float along, very tranquil, beautiful. And if you are a plant buff, you know, lots of different kinds of aquatic vegetation to identify and, uh, and see water lilies and pickerel. And uh, you can get out your, your book and learn a few of those, you know, a wide variety of all the pretty native aquatic plants. Good family friendly peddling. And, you know, I haven't been on that stretch of the river without seeing bald eagles, uh, you know, either one or multiple. <laughs> there was like really a stretch where uh, they are common, you know, it's great. Uh, there's otters uh, in that area. And, you know, if you see anything like this, uh, and, I, and I don't mean the guy, I mean, if you see this kind of thing, you know that there's this kind of thing around. So of course, beavers are applying their trade in the river as well. Lots of turtles basking and bird watching, you know, herons and kingfishers, the eagles I mentioned, ospreys. Uh, you know, I'm not a birding expert, but you know, if you just go out with your binocs, uh, you know, there's tons of things to see, very, very rich. Uh, landscape uh, ecosystem for, for birds. So as we are making our way down, we're heading towards Payson Park, which is kind of just a little bit um, north of 
Route 90 there in, um, in Warren. Uh, and that's a little bit, uh, it's a little, we can call it a little more bony there in that area. Uh, but uh, when the water levels are good, you can get through or you can kind of, you know, <laughs> portage through a little bit in that area as well. That's kind of the character uh, of that in that area. And then finally, you know, really on to Thomaston. So what we're looking at here, um, this is Route 90, right, in Warren. And Payson Park's like kind of about in here. And here's the St. George River coming down, Thomaston. And uh, so there's a couple of ways to go here. Now this is tidal. So you can wait till the tide is right, you know, kind of put in your uh, boat and at the public launch in Thomaston and then go up and then, you know, come back down. Or you can kind of put in a pace and park and it's a little bit of portage, a little bit of kind of getting through here, but then you can just, float right down, but be sure to try to uh, go with the tide a little bit. So here, you know, they're, they're especially, I'm not sure if they've started yet, but a sign of spring, you know, it's the alewives swimming up to fresh water to spawn. Uh, they are very common in that area of the river. They're a really important food for other wildlife species. Uh, and um, they are, we're trying to you know, protect their habitat. Uh, the watershed here is home to 31 rare, threatened, and endangered species. Uh, this is a freshwater mussel, and this is no, the New England bluet damselfly. And both of these species need excellent water quality to survive. Uh, so this is the Thomaston um, uh, landing, and as you can see, really great place to uh, put your boat in the water real easy there. And you know, it's all in our backyard. You know, we love it here. We live here and all of this is, uh, is available. So I really encourage you to get out uh, and explore it. You know, just this uh, little safety bit, you know, be safe, of course. You need to scout the more challenging rapids, know your level. Uh, don't, you know, line your canoe if you're uncomfortable getting through there, you know, no, no worries with that. Use your good judgment, uh, but most of all, really like get out there on that river and enjoy it. We are, we're so lucky to have uh, a river that is so beautiful, so clean, so full of wildlife. Uh, and, and it's really right there with lots of access for people to get out and enjoy it. Uh, so you know, who conserves the river and who cares about water quality um, and who cares about public access? Well, um, the Georgia's River Land Trust does. And since 1987, we've conserved almost 3, 000, uh, 4, acres of really the most special places in mid-coast Maine. Like this, like this, and like this. We also have 61 miles of trails. So if you like to get your hiking boots dirty, you know, our trails are obviously delightful. We also um, conserve, help conserve local farms. And we help to foster that next generation of Maine farmers who want to live and work and raise their families and carry on that. In the, tradition uh, in Maine. We have the Langley Sculpture Preserve in Cushing. And that is the home and studio of a uh, really renowned local artist, Bernard Langley. It is uh, a menagerie uh, full of um, his sculptures. Uh, this is just one of them in a, you know, in a, in a beautiful landscape setting. It's free. Um, Come and check it out. It's really cool. And we run kids programming there. Um, we do an after school program for Cushing Elementary School kids and we do a summer camp. Uh, but these are the Cushing kids uh, out uh, collecting things in nature for their to come back and make, you know, beautiful art projects out of. So it's great. Gets them out in the woods, gets them looking around um, and then gets them, you know, 
being creative, creative and in, engaging with that spirit of uh, Bernard Langley. Clearly, this is also uh, quite delightful. Uh, we are hands-on, can-do kind of organization. We're building trails. Uh, this particular one is a bike trail in the Thomaston Town Forest, where it's a beginning uh, bike trail, and it's really family-friendly. Kids, families, I, I have been on it, and I'm on my, my bike, and I, I had a blast. It's really fun. I think if you haven't tried it, you should, and... Um, this is a, is a great uh, beginning place to do that. We did a real collaboration with a lot of uh, partners on this and uh, uh, including the school. So it's a nearby middle school that can use it. Yeah, you can ride your bike in the winter. Uh, we run on volunteers. You know, we, uh, we do a lot with volunteers and, and this is a happy volunteer with a chainsaw. So. Uh, if you have a chainsaw and you like to get out there and use it and you have run out of places on your own property uh, to cut down trees, well, uh, come to us because we have lots of that kind of thing and um, you will have fun. But mostly, you know, we want to connect people uh, with great outdoor experiences because the more people, you know, have that kind of you know, positive experience outdoors, the more they're going to want to protect those places, safeguard those places, um, you know, and, and make sure that they are uh, protected for, for generations to come. So, you know, it's all about where we live. We know why we love it. Uh, and the idea is to get out and enjoy it. Okay, here's the say, how to save the planet part. You know, you can keep the St. George River pristine and accessible. You can become a member of the Georgia River Land Trust and, you know, be with us as we do our work. You can make a donation, you can volunteer, but if you do, you know that you are making a difference uh, here in this watershed for this incredible river and this beautiful landscape, the wildlife, the people who live here, uh, we're all in it together, as we say. So we've talked about some river experiences that are really extraordinary and, and the diverse kind of different ways that you can um, get on the river, things that, different things that you can draw, try, different places you can go. We've talked about wildlife, which is just rich and varied out there. And we've talked about how you can save the planet. Uh, and so don't forget that part. So I want to say with that, you know, happy paddling. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you learned a little something. Go to the website, get the map, uh, and get out there and, uh, and have a good time. But thank you very much. And if anybody has any questions, I am happy to answer them. Excellent. Thank you so much, Meg. Uh, if you have a question, if no one is speaking, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and ask me your question. Or if you prefer, you can just type them into the chat and I'll read them aloud. So it's up to you. I did see um, William posted in the chat the digital link to the uh, to the trail map. So thank you for that. Oh, nice, thank you. I can fill the time, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll show this. Thank you for your questions, y'all. Ooh. Yes, this map. Also, if you become a member, you will get this map for free. And this map shows the Georges River and it shows access points and it also shows all of our trails. And it's very pretty and um, has some great information on the back. So uh, that's another source of information for people who want to get out there and enjoy this place. Uh, let's see, Doug asks, is there any information on the website about the average length of time it takes to paddle each segment of the river trail? Oh, but that's a really good, that's a good thing. I'll write that down. Uh, if you do it, you know, let us know. Uh, I don't, but that's a great idea. Oh, 
Anybody else? So, um, uh, uh, there are not overnight camping spots uh, uh, along the route, but uh, we are doing a real initiative to take a look along there and see where we might, um, you know, have that because uh, there are our, our other rivers, uh, you know, the Hudson River has that, uh, you know, canoe trail like that, you know, in some ways this isn't you know, really maybe long enough um, for that. Uh, but um, yeah, we have that on our radar. That's a good one. <laughs> hey, Bonnie and Dave. Um, when you're speaking, oh, these are going by fast. I'm gonna just try to pick some. Uh, is there, uh, okay, oh, we're going camping. We paddled and found some beavers had blocked the river some. There are places uh, where they have done that. Yeah, yeah. We're not really um, maintaining the river um, like that right now. Uh, so uh, if you have some spots like that where you find and you could just shoot us an email or take a picture, that would be great. And we'll kind of put that up for people to, um, to learn about. Is there a paddling club? Well, that's interesting that you should mention that too. This summer, we're uh, going to do some uh, BYOB events, just meetups, like, uh, and BYOB, of course, is bring your own boat. And so um, we'll put out some information uh, on our website or try to publicize about that, because it would be nice if it was just, uh, if we could get some, like an informal uh, group of paddlers to say like, hey, you know, we're gonna all go meet up at, um, at uh, Payson Park, or we're all going to meet up in Thomaston and, and paddle up, you know, because um, that would be fun. Oh, when speaking of the fast water in spring, are you talking about twos? Now, I think that must be like a technical term. Um, so I am not uh, familiar with that. Uh, Craig Butler. Um, is that, um, yeah, can't tell you the answer to that. One of the most beautiful stretches of St. George is near the Powder Mill Dam in Warren. What is the current access to that? Uh, uh, not familiar with exactly where that is. Um, that kind of, that, if I'm, if I'm thinking of the right place, that stretch of the river is a little tough, really where you need to put in, um, in Union, there's only really, between Union and Payson Park, there's not a lot of places to um, put your, um, your boat in, and that's kind of a long stretch. Um, so there, those are the access points for that. And then below Warren, or below 90, you know, Payson Park is the next access. Uh, and then down to the um, Thomaston uh, boat launch. Is Cargill Pond the headwaters or Lake St. George? Well, Lake St. George is, that's one. There is also though, uh, Quantabaca Lake also has a little headwater. So we actually kind of have two heads, but um, Lake, we call it Lake St. George um, the main. Yes, that's a rating scale. That's about the number twos, yeah. <clears throat> Any linked the efforts to have better fish passage in and out of Quanta Bay Cook. Also, any precedent for the St. George as a non land dock salmon river? So, I hope people can still hear me. There we go. Um, we, uh, one of our board members is on the, uh, um, is um, active in uh, Trout Unlimited. So we um, are looking to do some projects uh, with them. So I think they would have a better idea about, uh, about some fish passages because um, I'm sure they're interested in, in that as are we. All right, any final questions? Any other questions? Well, M, should I wrap it up or should we keep going? 
I think that seems pretty good. I'm not seeing any new questions here. Um, but I think that sounds good to me. If no one else has a question, uh, thank you everyone for coming out tonight. Thank you so much to Meg for a really lovely presentation and uh, have a wonderful night, everyone.